generally on a model railway layout, you use a controller, say like this gauge master here, to change the direction and the speed of the loco. However, I've come up with something a little bit different. This here uses a Raspberry Pi to, and a screen to control the layout. You press this button here, and as you can see, the C-Class, it moves. And that's because of the Pi controlling the voltage to the track. And in this video, I'll explain how that works. Starts off with a power supply, like the Gauge Master one. You can see that's the Gauge Master and the smaller one, the Pi. And that runs up to here, that's just a standard 12 volt power supply with a uh, USB, I think it's C end. And that controls the, all the power basically into the Pi. And those just a few wires going into the board on the left control the motor controller. You can see the silver screen, well not screen sorry, silver square. That is the wireless I think point allowing it to connect to the internet. But that doesn't need it on this one. And then you can see little black square, that's the, I think, CPU of the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is what I've got here, but this is Pico W, the lamp for wireless. These wires there control the motor controller, the, with the heat sink on it, the heat sink allows it to dissipate heat, though in this situation there's very little heat, and fish plate um, wires with, that connect the power to the track, uh, same as used on my other layout. The breadboard, which is the white square, with the loads of pins in isn't needed however it helps and you can see the soldering to connect it to the breadboard and that is the only soldering actually needed to get this to work you can see here the screen this is with it off and then I turn it on and you can see there's various different buttons the joystick which will in theory in the future allow for a lot more use you can see that currently just at the moment only controls lighting up the squares however there is a plan in the future to be, use that to control the train similar to how you use a knob on a controller to control it but currently the buttons are the only things that control the trains and you can see when I press it the train goes the first button here which is A that simply speeds up the train slowly so it's set to increase the voltage by 250 every time to be honest I have no clue what the numbers are but it's just the numbers start at like 10,000 or something and if you add 250 each time or 2,500 each time sorry you'll slowly reach up you can see it's maybe a bit hard to see in these time lapses but that's what is happening the train is slowly speeding up and then it slowly it starts speeding down again as well after you press another button you can see here when all the very sleep things I don't know what it's called that it just is you can see the red on the joystick works so if I press the bottom button the train will start slowing down because that's how I've coded it. The train slowly speeds down the voltage reducing in the same way and eventually it stops. With some locos that use more voltage than the C-Class it takes longer for them to actually stop. You can see here now C-Class has finally stopped. Some of them buzz for a while before taking off. Some of them say for example like this Batman Plymouth diesel shunter takes a very long time to actually start on this one. This one here starts at a different voltage. I believe it starts at a higher voltage or it might be a lower. <laughs> to be honest, it's a bit, a bit embarrassing that it's, I've coded this myself and I don't know what it does. Speaking of code, I'll put it in the description and the comments if it's too big. So not all of it's mine. Some of it I've borrowed because to be honest, I have no clue how to code a screen, but well, a lot of the train control stuff itself is what I've done basing it off motor control off other people's code but you can see here the um, Plymouth does take a while to actually start going but eventually it does I find sometimes they will start a bit earlier if you give it a bit of help to start while we wait for the Plymouth to start I'm going to go over a few other things the plan is eventually to be able to select various different locos because at the moment it's just one standard thing and that means for say locos like the c-class they start very quickly whereas this one takes ages to actually get going and i want to be able to do it so it's almost like personalized to each loco meaning it's much more effective second of all i want to be able to use the up and down motion on the joystick to control the sort of speed and eventually i want to be able to sort of also have a point 
or multiple points with point motors, allowing automatic running and shunting in with that signing and the point. With infrared sensors, it's possible to also know where the train is. Admittedly, on a layout like this, is a bit pointless, but it'd be much more useful on a larger layout where you can have a live map of where the train actually is, and it could also link into signals as well. There's probably more possibilities that I haven't thought about yet, but I feel like it's once I've eventually figured out the coding of how to do it, it should be quite an interesting and enjoyable experience. Currently, it's been quite fun. It's been simple so far. Once we've got the screen working, the screen's the hardest bit. The next plan for what I want to do is to get an expansion board, which means I don't have to have all those wires draped around the layout to make it a lot more easier and to construct a box with a switch in allowing the train to stop using all the power to the track to stop but the pie will still run meaning if there's any problems I don't have to unplug the power to the pie and you can see now the Plymouth has finally gone and this one does the same thing as the first button slowly speeding up and then once I press another button which is I believe X it'll slowly speed down you can see the joystick works, I find that is a useful feature when sleeps because you can't do anything else when it's sleep. I don't know why it's called sleep, but just however long it is, using various high and lows to change the direction. This is once again forward, and you can see the plume is going round and round. And now the plume is still going. And eventually the Plymouth should eventually slow down when the voltage gets too low for it to actually work. I haven't showed it in this video because, to be honest, it's very boring watching trains slowly speed up on video. It's much more entertaining on real life, in real life, but when making this video it seems a bit boring. So I haven't included the last button, but I'll simply tell you what it does. It slowly speeds up and slowly speeds down all on its own in the opposite direction because I it allows this button here which is currently running it allows for locos that use more voltage such as the older ones or ones that just require more voltage in general meaning there's only one button allowing to go backwards I haven't coded it at, at the moment so we, whatever direction it's going it'll slow down in that direction I don't know if I can do that but that's eventually the plan to prove other locos work on it here's Charles Due to the gearing and the voltage, it's running very fast, but this is an 9 loco running, and that works as well. I feel like there's a lot of other things, and it works out much cheaper than a standard controller. In theory, all you need is a 12-foot power supply, Raspberry Pi, Pico, and a motor controller. So I'm interested to see what people think. Thank you for watching this video by me. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below with some video ideas or feedback. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.